Again, this is a series of unboxing videos I'm doing on the Bronica RF645 and the two lenses I picked up with it, the 45mm and the 65mm. I posted a separate video with this lens mounted up, or sorry, the unboxing video of this lens. It is now mounted up. This is the 65mm and I just threw the viewfinder on there so you guys have an idea of what this looks like. If you saw the other video, you could tell this lens is like the exact same size, so really visually and kind of in the hand they feel identical. I'm going to set this one aside here. Today I'm going to show you the 65mm f4, again Zenzenon RF lens. When I was reading about Bronica and it looks like it's a play on, they used to be called Zenza Bronica, but when Tamron bought them they dropped the Zenza from their name. Here again is the instruction manual, and this is what's funny, and I'm just going to show this to you to kind of laugh at this. I didn't realize this is the same instruction manual that came in the other lens, and it shows the all three lenses. So this apparently, and I need to actually just open the whole thing up, this will have the same instructions for all the lenses. And I'm hoping this also means this camera is set for the 135 millimeter f4.5, because apparently that's the one people want. The reality is I'm never probably going to buy either the 100 or the 135 because they're both extremely expensive. This one's impossible to find and expensive. More, more expensive than all of this. Even the 100 millimeter is almost the same price as this and the, this camera and two lenses in the boxes. And from what I understand, you need to have it really well calibrated to even work with the 135. But basically they had downgraded to the 100 because it wasn't as far reaching and I guess it was easier to calibrate. But uh, I don't know if that's anything or they just happened to throw these in the, man the same manual in all of them. I, if anyone knows, I'd appreciate leaving that in the comments how to find out which lens your Bronica RF645 is calibrated for. I've heard some are calibrated for the 135 millimeter, but a lot of them, like after they realized the problems they had with it and basically nobody being able to get focused with the 135 because of the the rangefinder coupling like wasn't set up right or something. They changed to the 100 millimeter. I have no idea how to figure out which one my camera is set up for. So, anyway, this is the 65 millimeter. It's gonna be a quick video because there's no viewfinder or anything else to show you guys. I will show you the rear element because if you saw the other video, you'll see this one doesn't have that extra piece sticking out. And unlike the wide angle with that kind of protruding, you know, uh, convex element, this is still I think convex but it's 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 totally deep down inside there and it's not not as big but otherwise you know it looks the same I was talking about in the other video the only visual difference on that the external you know parts of the lens compared to the 45 wide angle is I, I think even even the focus scale I was looking at it again I think they're the same it's just the depth of field so obviously with a more standard lens the depth of field is much tighter that wide angle, the depth of field is it's much bigger, you know, shooting at f8 on that one, you have a pretty wide depth of field, whereas this one, you have this pretty narrow depth of field. Nothing surprising. Same lens hood, as I mentioned before, it's either and both, same lens cap, exact same filter element on the front. I think, and I'll compare the lenses side by side, I think it's the same size front element as well. So just like the other one I had shown you with the, with the 45, you have the same deal where when you mount the lens hood on, this one has a nice click too. It's super protected in there, so I don't see the point in using protector filters. So that's the lens. Nice clicky aperture ring. It's a aperture by wire, which is neat. You know, it's a, kind of like a modern lens in that regard, you know, electronic. It's nice, it kind of, it feels normal and feels right being used to digital cameras, but I love the film and the, the build quality on this is unreal. I mean, this is, this is premium, super well-made Japanese stuff here, and you can tell, I mean, it's heavy, it's metal, it's awesome. And there you go, made in Japan. So that's that lens. Uh, not much to this one. Smaller box, no viewfinder, great lens. Uh, I was talking about in the other video, F4, you know, for me, I like to shoot a lot of my uh, my kids and indoors a lot, just because it's, it's tougher outside, especially with the weather, and it's getting colder and whatnot and raining these days. But... Uh, I've, I'm making it work, and I actually was just playing around shooting shots of them with the with flash, kind of bounce flash. Hoping it came out. I had to try metering with a junky iPhone app as well as I just b brought out my digital camera and set it to the same aperture and shutter speed and ISO and 
the figured out the right power on my manual flash and hooked it up here and hopefully it came out right so that's uh, this lens hope you guys enjoyed this one thanks